r slash ask reddit what is the thing we don't talk about in your family my grandfather's secret girlfriend that he has had since like the 70s is grandma still around cuz idk that's almost like 40 50 years of being together yes she is she knows about it but it looks the other way that time my sister stole thousands of dollars from my father's business while working there Ro, they still speak to her my father doesn't trust her but we still get together at least once every couple of weeks for dinner like nothing ever happened a lot of people in my family are alcoholics it's okay to acknowledge that they drink a lot but it's not okay to call them alcoholics even when they do things like routinely pass out on their front lawn getting a huge number of duis drinking so much labat that the company sends them a flag and a lawn chair getting fired from fabricland for drunkenly screaming at customers then buffing on a quilt or getting pulled over on a motorized beer cooler by the rcmp all those incidents can be discussed so long as no one mentions alcoholism i thought it was that my aunt was hardcore into drugs turns out nobody knew to be fair i didn't know per se but it was so obvious that i thought everybody knew but didn't mention it my family was blown away when she got busted going to florida to buy pills so she could resell them here i was like yep done reminds me of my cousin's ex-wife she always looked zonked out and worked at a nursing home so i figured she was stealing meds everyone was super confused after she collapsed at my other cousin's wedding after having a few drinks Apparently she had a lot of painkillers in her system. My father had an affair and I have a half brother. I actually became really close to my half brother when we met for the first time in our 20s at dad's funeral. Neither of us was very close to him but showed up anyway. That was almost 20 years ago and we hang out every few days and live near each other now. Too bad my dad was a jerk but it was cool gaining a brother. We look alike and are only 2 years apart. My uber catholic grandparents met when my grandpa was married. He left his wife. My grandmother got pregnant and they eloped in the 40s. My grandma was 18 and my grandpa was 27. He took her to her senior prom. No one knew about this until last year. And my uncle was born early. Apparently no one in my family can do math and never added up the birth and marriage dates. Well known rule of small towns, the first baby is always early but the second takes the whole 9 months. Those full term sized preemies are just blessed miracles from God. The numerous suicides. It's finally getting to the point where they admit that these people even existed, let alone died. One of my great uncles killed himself before I was born and if not for all the group photos and my great aunt being a decent human, I wouldn't have ever known his name. My mom likes to pretend they died in car accidents or heart attacks. It made for some real confusion once I got older. Oh man. We have one pretty devastating suicide attempt in our family that no one acknowledges or even talks about. So the story goes. My two cousins who are brother and sister got caught having sex. Turned out they were in a full blown sexual relationship for years. Ben was 19 and Anne was 20 when it all came to light. They were both sexually abused by a family friend when they were children and bonded. Is that the right term in this situation? Over that. So my auntie was mortified. Told them that it wouldn't be tolerated and that she would be sending Ben to live with relatives in Australia. Ben was so devastated by being found out and the thought of being parted from his sister that he hung himself. My aunt discovered him midway through the attempt. She grabbed him by the legs and held him up screaming for help until a neighbor heard and called an ambulance. Ben didn't die but suffered a severe brain injury as a result. He is now in his 40s and is basically a vegetable. He cannot speak. He can't walk. He drools constantly and makes loud unintelligible noises. Breaks my goddamn heart. No one ever speaks of Anne. She has vanished. Doesn't want to talk to anyone in the family. It's a pretty sad and messed up situation. When it all happened the story was that Ben broke his neck in an accident. I only found out the full story from my dad last year after 20 plus years. We had a centralized vacuum system in my house growing up. Mum caught me laying next to it, with my pants down. If you were in my family we'd bring it up once a week lol. That super pro-life cousins and aunt ran to get an abortion for my 16 year old cousin when she got pregnant. As much of an a-hole it would make you. You should totally point that out every time they bring up being pro-life. 
the fact that my girlfriend is older than my stepfather. So do you have a much older girlfriend or does your mum have a much younger husband? Both. My wedding day. It was a 6 month marriage to an emotionally abusive woman that ended with infidelity, depression, and homelessness. I'm totally fine now but I don't ever mention it, so no one else does. My grandpa has brought the wedding up a couple of times for necessary reasons, but refers to it as that time we met you in the park. That our father lied to our family about everything where he grew up, lived, militarily background, other family, jobs, we found out after he died, and never spoke of it again. It's been 10 years since he died. How did you find out? Presumably the other family were at the funeral. Our feelings. My grandfather remarried a woman who almost immediately developed Alzheimer's and forgot who he is. He is now dating his first wife while his actual wife is confused who anyone is. He refuses to divorce because the scumbag family of his second wife bailed when they saw how expensive she was going to be. And my family had to get her care because she was too much for my grandfather to take care of he is almost 90. I called out the relevant members of her family for bailing and was told I was being rude. Which might be true, but I'm also ducking right. That my grandfather, on my dad's side, was the only one to accept my oldest brother when he came into the picture. My dad married my mom when my brother was 3, long before I came along, and everyone looked at him like a nobody and told my dad that my mother was a horse. Your grandfather was a hero for your brother, and you slash other siblings. I can't imagine how painful it would be for a 3 year old to be totally rejected by everyone in his family. He didn't get to choose his parents or their actions. The rest of your family are total jerkwads. They were wrong about your mom. Too. But why hate on a 3 year old? Jeez. My sister's eating disorder. She eats a ton and goes on to vomit. She goes jogging for 1 hour or more per day. Every day. No breaks even though her knees hurt like crazy and refuses to eat any carbs, fruits and vegetables only. I seem to be the only one that realizes the magnitude of this. I seem to be the only one that thinks of this as a sickness, not as a temporal phase. It's like this for 3 years already. No idea when my parents noticed, in the life of a young woman. Whenever I say something I get shushed at and later have to justify my insensitive behavior in front of my parents. So I just kind of gave up on arguing. Not sure what I can do to change things without disrupting the family. As someone who did the same for about 13 years and had people both ignore it and speak to me about it, there's not much. Frankly, you can ease into the conversation and offer support here and there but at least in my experience, people talking to me about it, if they weren't already the people I was disclosing my behavior to, made me ignore them and distance myself. If you're non-judgmental, gentle, and try to focus on harm reduction for her behaviors, it may help. The fact that my uncle is very likely schizophrenic, but since he thinks the voices he hears are from heaven, and the creatures he sees are from hell, we just say he is pious. My aunt does the same thing, follows every voice and anything they say because it's God. A slightly happier story than most here, a few years ago, my sister and I reconnected after not seeing each other for 10 plus years. The split was due to our parents divorce being an absolute shitstorm. Neither of us has any desire to reboot what wasn't our fight to begin with, so we just don't bring it up. One of many is Christmas 2 years ago when my brother cried in front of us for the first time in his adult life and then my dad started yelling at him over politics and my sister and I hid in the bathroom because we started crying too. And then I came out and my dad started yelling at me and saying I have no heart. And then we had to open presents. Jesus. They can talk all day about politics. But if Jesus comes up, everybody gets uncomfortable. Lucky, we don't get to talk about politics at all, but my mother-in-law's always talking about angels and demons and God. My father, unless I've done something my mom doesn't like, then she can't wait to pull out the you're just like your father. Side note, my dad is awesome so secretly I take this as a compliment. In the 15 years since their amicable but painful divorce, I literally cannot bring up my dad around my mom without her talking bad about him. Meanwhile. He has not once ever said an unkind thing about her or my stepdad. Apparently our dad had another kid about 8 years older than me, 
My mom blurted something about it after their divorce when she was pissed about something. It was along the lines of if he thinks he can forget you exist like that other kid of his. She then turned very white and I was never able to get more out of her than that. My dad pretends he doesn't know what I'm talking about but has apparently told my brother a bit of the story and then backtracked and never talked about it again. So yeah, apparently I'm not the oldest. That New Year's Eve when my mom tried to commit suicide by swallowing a BJNCH of antidepressive pills. For years everyone has acted like it didn't happen. She doesn't want to talk about it. Both she and I saw therapists for it. Okay, to break the chain of secret girlfriends and estranged relatives. My family does not talk about cottage cheese. I can tell you want to hear more about this. For that we must start at the beginning. My father is a lover of all things dairy. He would drink so much milk as a child his mother would tell him you either have to become a dairy farmer or marry a farmer's daughter. And dear dad did just that when he and my mom tied the knot. Dad also loves cheese. Solid cheese. Soft cheese. And cottage cheese. Dad is however very squeamish. He cannot stand the sight or thought of blood, body fluids or cheese curds. This makes enjoying his cottage cheese, by the court, difficult. No one is allowed to talk about cheese, curds, whey, or how it is all made when he is enjoying his snack. If you make the mistake of mentioning any of these things dad ends the conversations by throwing his hands in the air and yelling we don't talk about that. The fact that I'm the only one in my family who doesn't smoke pot. Get a load of this square over here. My sister, pretended to be me when she got arrested. Jokes on her. She paid the fine and when it was found they didn't follow proper procedure they refunded the fine to me. Karma. The fact that my cousin got kidnapped when he was a baby. Long story short. Two young teenagers got knocked up. Got married. Aunt wanted a divorce but husband was abusive and manipulative. And she fled out of state back to us. Her family. He followed her to try to talk it out. She let him inside to talk. He took my baby cousin who was sleeping in her arms and fled out of state. Then he took her to court for abandoning her child and refused to let her see him. 20 years later, my cousin seeks us out and we all reconnect. Thanksgiving dinners are great, but we don't talk about that whole ordeal. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price. Bruh.